Israel shows no signs of stopping. And they're posting videos like this instead. Let's I'm Zach Sage Fox here on the beach of Tel Aviv. Welcome to Are You a White Colonizer? The Game Show. Let's play. Excuse me, ma'am. To win 100 shekels, are you a white colonizer? I am not. Congratulations, because you won 100 shekels. It's so crazy watching this insane video right after we just saw the conditions in northern Gaza. It's like, dude, you literally are a colonizer. In the first two days of the ceasefire negotiations, there was actually some momentum leading up to the ceasefire convos. America said that they got Israel to, to basically align on a key, key high profile hostages in Israeli detention that they would uh, release. That seemed like a good thing. And Hamas officials said that they were not going to participate in the ceasefire conversations, which of course wasn't like entirely correct. They were, they were just doing shuttle uh, diplomacy. Like they were, they were talking through intermediaries as they've done before. Israel's goals for the ceasefire negotiations have basically been to reiterate that you know it's not a real ceasefire and that they get to blow gaza to smithereens after they extract all the hostages which obviously is not a tenable position uh moin rabani has a thread on the ceasefire conversations but the latest is that hamas rejected the latest hostage ceasefire deal and hamas co uh, commenting on the last round of negotiations in Do uh, doha we dealt responsibly with the efforts of the mediators and welcomed the declaration of the u.n security council resolution we asked for a plan to be presented in anticipation of Netanyahu's procrastination and obstacles, and we were measured, or we were assured that he was continuing to put it forward to thwart the mediator's efforts. The new proposal is consistent with Netanyahu's conditions, such as his rejection of the permanent ceasefire and a comprehensive withdrawal from the Gaza Strip, which prevents the completion of the exchange deal. We hold Netanyahu fully responsible for thwarting the mediator's efforts and for the lives of his prisoners who are exposed to the same danger that our people are exposed to. So when people say, when people say, oh, Hamas is like negotiating at the table or Hamas is not showing up and they're rejecting the, the bridging proposals, it is specifically because Israel is refusing to meet the earlier conditions that the UN voted on, the earlier conditions that Biden presented, the earlier conditions that Hamas actually presented in uh, in late February and agreed to once. So you have to remember that because that is the like there is a there is always a little bit of fast and loose. There's always a little bit of a, a of a double speak in terms of like how these how these uh, conversations are being handled. And it is it is completely ridiculous. It, it is not it is not a real ceasefire proposal if Israel refuses to agree to the terms that the United States has actually put forward in terms of having it be a phase one ceasefire. Uh, moving on to a phase two where there is a permanent cessation of hostilities and then reconstruction. Hamas rejects the new U.S. bridging proposal, says Barack Ravid. The new proposal addresses Netanyahu's conditions, especially with regard to his refusal to stop the war and fully withdraw from Gaza and to continue control over the Philadelphia Corridor and the Netzarim Corridor. The proposal sets new conditions regarding the prisoner exchange process and withdraws from previous clauses in a way that does not allow reaching an agreement, which is crazy because even Barack Ravid is openly saying that it's Hamas rejecting the new U.S. bridging proposal, which Israel completely changed, okay? Like, that is ridiculous. Israel is saying that they want to maintain troops in the Philadelphia corridor is, for those of you who don't understand, surrounding the Rafah region, Israel wants to still be in, like, still have boots on the ground in southern Gaza, surrounding the Gaza, surrounding the Gaza Strip, specifically on the Egyptian border crossing. The Iranian retaliation, the expected Iranian retaliation to Israel is seemingly just a additional pressure point on these deals coming uh, to a close. Like, the American government and the Hamas officials are using additional Iranian pressure that they have the because Iran does have the, uh, you know, right to respond to Israel violating Iranian sovereignty. Once again, they're utilizing that as a uh, as another pressure point on Israel to do the right thing and to agree to the terms that, like, supposedly they presented. However, they are the ones who keep saying, yeah, these deals that we actually presented are 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 not good that is where we're at here is uh, here by the way a delegation from the un finally made it into north gaza this is israel's war against hamas chat <laughs> you don't understand all of these buildings were hamas
You're surprised there is a road. Um, they need to, they need to move their tanks. That's why the roads, like the dirt roads, exist. It is specifically so that they can move their weapons of war freely. It's not really a road. It is actually a bulldozed road where a road used to previously exist, but no longer does. Are you as invested in other conflicts and suffering as you are in this? Um, yes, I am. And I do cover it a lot. But I do find it funny that you immediately, uh, you immediately only bring this up cynically after saying, why not release the hostages and watch as Israel will still keep up their invade and now they no longer have an excuse for what they're doing. Yeah, as though that is something that is going to work. You literally looked at this and you said, aren't you worried about other conflicts too? Like, hey, how about you look away from this? How about you look away from this that is happening with your weapons, with your taxpayer dollars? And then so obviously went and turned around and acted like you actually think that like Israel will have, um, Israel needs excuses to behave this way. Oh, it won't have any excuses. Will you, will you support a ceasefire if, if Palestinians release all the f hostages? No, you won't. So shut the f up. You'll turn the other cheek. And you'll keep saying you'll find a different fake excuse made uh, made up by Israel to continue its bloody war as you have already obviously avoided the reality of the matter that is in unfolding in front of you. There were probably Israeli civilians that were held hostage in some of these buildings. Israel blew them up regardless. Israel killed those hostages. Once again, showcasing that it doesn't give a fuck about the civilian casualties. Like the Western world's attitude towards Israel has already moved way beyond what is permissible okay israel's actions are far above and beyond what is normal what is Welcome. allowed what should be allowed okay and yet israel uh shows no signs Two, are of, you a white uh israel shows no signs of stopping and they're posting videos like this instead. Let's I'm Zach Sage Fox here on the beach of Tel Aviv. Welcome to Are You a White Colonizer? The Game Show. Let's play. Excuse me, ma'am. To win 100 shekels, are you a white colonizer? I am not. Congratulations, because you won 100 shekels. Thank you. Bye. Right, for 100 shekels, are you a white colonizer? No. Where's your family from? From Republic Dominicana. Okay, so you're from the Dominican Republic? Yeah. You won 100 shekels. Is this a white country? Bro, it's so crazy. It's so crazy watching this insane video right after we just saw the conditions in northern Gaza. It's like, dude, you literally are a colonizer. You are. Like, you can you can shield all the brown people you can find on a beautiful Tel Aviv beach all day every day to be like, see, we're so we're so multicultural and so different. It's like that doesn't change the reality. Look at your beaches, look at your way of existence right now, and then look at like 15 miles beyond the boundary of the Gaza uh, border fence. This is literally zone of interest, dude. Straight up. Country? No. You have here black, white, everything you want. Come here, experience it with your own eyes, and you'll see that there's a lot of friendly brown people all over the place. Where are you from? Brazil and Colombia. Indians, you born in India. I am from Melut. From Morocco and Iran. Half Spanish, half Brazilian. I am Yemen. Morocco. That's not very white colonizer -y at all. Are you a white colonizer? No, no. You've won! <laughs> Are you a white colonizer? No. No. No, I'm not. No. When I look at my skin, I realize, no, indeed, I'm not. Guess what? You won 100 shekels. Oh, sh dude, never mind. Um, never mind. There's a lot of friendly brown people in Israel, bro. Yeah. So I guess they're not uh, engaging in death, destruction, and genocide. What I find funny about this tweet is that this person admits Israelis are, in fact, colonizers. All Israelis are white colonizers. Israelis? Yeah. No, some of them are black. Some of them are brown. Many of them are brown, actually. Why? One must ask why there is, like, a different tier of citizenship even inside of Israel for non-Jews. Everybody loves talking about how Israel, what? What are you talking about? It's not. It's so diverse. It's so crazy. It's like, okay, if you're Jewish, of Arab descent, you get to live wherever the fuck you want. If you're Muslim of Arab background or Christian of Arab background and you live inside of Israel and you have citizenship, you can't really marry who you want. You can't live wherever you want. What's that about? Someone should ask that question. What the fuck is that about? Now, the sad truth of the matter is that because the conditions in West Bank are so much worse and because the conditions in Gaza are just like completely untenable, it's just straight up genocide, that like obviously, is uh, Palestinian citizens of Israel, the non-Jewish citizens inside of Israel, of Arab descent, Druze, 
uh, Bedouin, those guys' conditions are are infinitely better. But even then, there is uh, different tiers, okay? The best you can expect, however, is, uh, you know, systematic disenfranchisement. Apples! I'm so happy. You're not a white colonizer! My grandparents came from Baghdad, Iraq. They were ethnically cleansed from there in the 40s. Wow. And they got kicked out? Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 It was a goal. For being Jewish. Yeah. Oh, God. Your family be allowed to go back to Yemen? Are Jews allowed in Yemen? <laughs> oh, that's a nice thought. What do you have to say to all of the people in the world who are calling this an apartheid white colonizer state? Please use your brains. Check facts. Educate yourself. I find it very offensive to be called. I think it's pretty funny because, like I said, whenever an Israeli, whenever an Israeli is met with the reality that Israel is an apartheid regime and they have to, like, respond to that, it's awesome this is going against the narrative what are you talking about are you taking maya ayuni's side please don't pro palestinians are no not defeating the anti-black allegations this is going against the narrative yeah dude yeah no totally you're right Forty thousand dead 76 years of apartheid the international organs of justice recognize it as such but hey this guy went up to a bunch of brown people who are like no sweetie israel is not a colonizer and then all of a sudden the narrative is shifted dude listen listen i don't know if you're like unit 8200 up in this but you are doing a horrible job you consistently say the dumbest shit in this chat anyway as i was saying every time israelis are met with the reality that israel is an apartheid they come across as the most annoying dips on the planet so it immediately it immediately destroys whatever kind of narrative that they're trying to present oh what do you mean israel is an apartheid state it is not sweaty we are fighting against terror no politique no politique here i thought it was a good game i thought in the beginning uh, israel was better but now mali is getting uh, is destroying them i think israel is not bad israel is not bad but no politique here. i think no politique here. i think mali is going to destroy no them here. today Stop. no i'm just talking about football no I'm just talking. I'm just talking about football. Mali the best. No politics here. Okay. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Are you taking my uni side? Please don't. Pro-Palestinian are not defeating the anti-black allegation. No, pro-Palestinian are not beating anti-black allegation. Israel, the most pro-black nation. Israel, that is why Israel the best. That's why we sterilize the Ethiopian Jews. Because we love the black people. No politic here. Israel, so pro-black. We love putting... We love putting black people in IDF uniform and showing we are fighting terror babies. No politique. All the white colonizers. What are we colonizing? They need to come visit. So Jews really do come in all shades and sizes. Yeah, of course. As you just saw, Israel is anything but a white colonizer state. Sick, dude. Yeah. What's going on? What's going on on the other side? What's going on on the other side of the borderline? You know what I mean? It is also additionally hilarious again that this is a last ditch desperate attempt. It's so funny to be like, yeah, dude, uh, the pro-Palestinian cause is so anti-black. They're really not beating the anti-black allegations. Like, shut the f up. Bitch. What do you mean? The f are you talking about? The same tactics that the American police force that used kettle and, kettle and corralling strategies against the fucking domestic anti-police uh, population and the riots and the protest that turned into riots was directly with idf training like what are we talking about the connection between israel and american policing is so deep it is hilarious that the people try to it is so hilarious that people try to go oh actually the pro-palestinian side is very anti-black sweetie shut the fuck up anyone that falls for that shit is the dumbest loser on the planet i'm sorry if you are like uh if you're pro-palestinian if you're pro-palestinian emancipation and you watch one tiktok uh that is massaged in a certain way and it like literally primes you into being like oh yeah well my conditional loyalty or my conditional allegiance is totally transactional actually allyship is transactional to me and i've decided that pro-palestinians are anti-black like then you're oblivious to the reality dumb f 